media. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed insists. We want to actually pick up the data from different parts of the country, different strata of society, to really understand people's perceptions. NCDC launches data research to interrogate behavioral responses to the containment of COVID-19. And world's largest flag unveiled in Ibadan. Good evening. This is NTA Network News. I am Jumwe Yusuf. We are live in Abuja. Adela Kami Akere joins me from Lagos. Thanks so much for joining us. President Mohamedou Buhari has reaffirmed the unshakable resolve of the governing All Progressives Congress to leave indelible footprints of all round development and a lasting legacy for future generations. Consequently, the party's caretaker and extraordinary convention planning committee is to be given necessary support by stakeholders towards conducting the forthcoming congresses and national convention in a manner that conforms with the next level enterprise. This was at an interactive engagement with the party leadership. State House correspondent Adam Osambu has the details. A new entrant into the governing APC is Senator Peter Nwoboshi representing Delta North Senatorial District. He was formally presented to President Muhammadu Buhari by Deputy Senate President Ovie Omo Agege, also from Delta State. The coming on board of Senator Mwa Boshi to assist in moving forward the agenda of President Muhammad Buhari and that of the governing APC is one of the many giant strides recorded by the party's caretaker and extraordinary convention planning committee led by Governor Mai Malabuni of Yobe State. The governor who presented the committee's progress report said apart from achieving genuine reconciliations and tremendous successes, in elections and by elections conducted so far, the party also witnessed high power defections from the opposition PDP, including serving governors, thereby improving its fortunes. I am pleased to state that the party is now more peaceful, more accommodating, and more united. That gives every member a true sense of belonging and ownership through the bottom-up approach which you have always advocated for. The APC, he said, now has over 40 million members and a permanent national secretariat complex named after the president, while preparatory activities have been finalized for the conduct of credible, transparent and flawless congresses and national convention to produce a strong leadership that will enjoy the trust and confidence of all party members. At all times, we have enjoyed the confidence of Mr. President and enjoyed your leadership. President Muhammad Buhari was full of appreciation for the remarkable job done so far by the Kiatika Committee, which he said inherited an APC engulfed in crisis and mindless behavior by members that led to multiple litigations and even defections from the party. It is gratifying to note that the party has bounced back to life. And the National Secretariat of our party has once again become a beehive of activities as it used to be in the good old days before the crisis. The task of consolidating on all the achievements that we have so far recorded is for all of us to which we all must be committed. The president called on all APC members to support the caretaker and extraordinary convention planning committee towards conducting the congresses and national convention as most critical aspect of his assignment. You must remember that we all want to leave behind a legacy of transparency and adhering to the democratic principles which the party and the country need to survive and prosper. As Progressive Governors Forum, we are quite happy with the National Caretaker and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. We congratulate them on the achievement. We congratulate Mr. President and the successes recorded. Part of it has a direct bearing on the forum. Vice President Yemi Oshibajo, governors and other stakeholders of the governing APC attended the meeting. From the State House, Adamusambu. NTA News.
Meanwhile, President Muhammadu Buhari on Friday approved the review of the timelines available to the All Progressives Congress, Kiatika, and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee. Salu Abdullahi Guanara reports. John James Akpaudoedehe, National Secretary, Kiatika and Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee, in a statement said, the president granted the approval after detailed consideration of the progress report, the schedule of outstanding activities with regards to Congresses and National Convention and the forthcoming Anambra governorship election. The president also approved the timetable for APC World Congresses to hold 24th July 2021, followed by local government congresses on 14th August 2021 and state congresses on 18th September 2021. With this development, the statement added that tenure of the caretaker committees at each level from world, local government, state and national will end immediately. Elections are held at their respective levels and its officers immediately take oath of office, terminating with the national convention. The statement said National Kiatika Chairman Governor Malabuni, on account of stewardship, highlighted his achievements to include leading the party to contest in several elections and by elections with overall successes rate of 95% and genuine reconciliation of aggrieved individuals and groups who either left or sealed the party in various courts, high power defections, including serving governors from the PDP to APC, which is increasing the fortune of the party, especially in the Southeast, which has been the stronghold of the opposition, setting up of a contact and strategy committee with a clear mandate to meet with all party stakeholders in every state to come up with a generally acceptable and people-based template for the smooth conduct of the forthcoming congresses and convention. Governor Bonis committee also planned to submit a new constitution to the president before presentation to the convention for ratification. The statement added that in order to cement the new cohesion in the party, the Kiatika committee convened the first ever conference for youth. On the forthcoming Anambra governorship election, the Kiatika committee notified the president that 14 aspirants indicated interest to contest the election through purchase of expression of interest and nomination forms, all of whom had been cleared by the screening committee as eligible to contest. Worthy of note as achievement also is the payment of outstanding balance and taking over of the ownership of the building, housing the APC National Secretariat and subsequent renaming of the APC National Secretariat to Buhari House. The national chairman, the statement added, informed the president that the committee had been very cautious and meticulous in making arrangements to conduct credible, transparent, flawless, and generally acceptable congresses and convention for the party to produce a strong leadership that will enjoy the support, trust, and confidence of all members in Abuja, Salihu Abdullah Higwanara, NTA News. Still talking politics, President Mohamedou Buhari has welcomed Senator Peter Mwabushi to the All Progressives Congress APC after he left the People's Democratic Party PDP. A statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Garbashe, who says Senator Mwabushi, representing Delta North's district, Delta State, was presented to President Buhari and National Caretaker Extraordinary Convention Planning Committee at the State House by Deputy Senate President Ove Omo Agege. The Deputy Senate President says Senator Mwabushi's decision to join the APC clearly shows that the effort of the CECPC is yielding result. The Senator was warmly welcomed by party members. A statement by the Special Advisor to the President on Media and Publicity, Femi Adeshino, says the medical follow-up visit of President Mohamed Buhari to the United Kingdom, earlier scheduled for today, Friday, June 25, 2021, has been postponed, as a new date will be announced in due course. Maintaining the position that the funding for gas and fossil fuel projects in Nigeria and other developing countries be sustained during the global transition to net zero emissions, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo said Nigeria will continue its frontline advocacy for a just transition.
State House correspondent GD Onifadi was there and filed in this report. Efforts aimed to advance uh, climate goals must first and foremost create carbon space for growing economies that have historically made negligible contributions to global emissions and have an obligation to their people to provide access to energy for electricity, for cooking and productive uses. Vice President Yemi Oshimbadu had at different forum in the past months raised the issue of financing of gas projects in developing countries, especially in Nigeria, advocating for a just transition and a more effective engagement since the campaign for the net zero emission by 2050 resumed. At the meeting, the Vice President noted that it was vital that the Forum of Gas Exporting Countries join forces together to prevent the defunding of gas and fossil fuel projects, especially from developing countries, by international bodies and institutions. In Abuja, Jude Onifade, Anche News. To other news now, Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has expressed disappointment with a section of the media who are given the impression that the federal government is out to stifle the media through the amendment of the NBC and NPC Act. The minister expressed his disappointment in an interactive session with journalist in Lagos, Anthony Forsen reports. The Information and Culture Minister who frowned at the misinterpretation being given to the public hearing by the House of Representatives to amend the NBC and NPC Act said those doing so are misinformed. This criticism is premised on falsehood. It's premised on misinformation. They must be referring to the bills on the National Broadcasting Commission and the Nigerian Press Council. These bills are not executive bills. These bills are actually private members' bills. And I must let me be clear the member who has introduced these bills has done nothing wrong. Is simply doing what he's elected to do, which is to make laws. La Mohammed added that it is equally sad that a section of the media is biased. Because I, as Minister of Information and Culture, I was invited, like other stakeholders, to make my contribution. It was a public hearing. And many of the people who are now going to the media seeking cheap publicity and muddling the water, I also had the opportunity to come and make contributions at the public hearing. I remember that a gentleman introduced himself as representing the MPO, which is the, I think is the Nigerian Press Organization. But rather than make any contribution, sought to stop the bill by saying, oh, this matter is before the Supreme Court. For those whom he described as self-acclaimed champions of democracy, he advised they should do a self-examination. Now, you see, it's quite worrisome and shameful that those who claim to love democracy also are also ignorant of the finer details and process of democracy. In Lagos, Antony Forson, NTA News. Information and Culture Minister Lai Mohammed has called on Nigerians to disregard impressions being cre created by people he described as selfish elites that Nigerians want the in disintegration of the country. The minister said this at a meeting with the leadership of the Association of Advertising Agencies of Nigeria in Lagos. Again, Anthony Fasson brings us the report. The minister's statement was in response to the association's plans to float a campaign to promote national unity. At the beginning of this administration, I introduced a campaign called Jim Begins With Me. This campaign actually was supposed to be an ethical revolution in the way we do things. And it covered every aspect of our lives 
And it was meant to stamp out corruption. It was meant to stamp out regularity. At the same time, unite us. Regrettably, due to positive of funds, the campaign is not doing as well as it is doing. And I want to take this opportunity to thank the DGNT that has stubbornly refused to allow that campaign to die. And that is why you still see today on NTA. Now, this campaign about national unity cannot come at a better time. And I hope we can, can fast forward. October seems very far for us, but I think we can understand the uniqueness and why you want to launch it on October 4th. We please want you to work with us. We would avail you of our platforms, the National Orientation Agency, which is present in every local government of Nigeria and there, which actually delivers messages of national unity in every language possible. Uh, NTF, I'm glad, is here to, to work with you. So also will... Um, the FRCN and the Voice of Nigeria and the News Agency of Nigeria. He said Nigerians should not allow anarchists and unpatriotic individuals or groups to drive a wedge between them to disorganize the country for selfish reasons. Acknowledging that the right challenges confronting the nation government, he maintained, is working hard to fix the challenges for a prosperous nation. President of the association, Steve Baba Eko appealed to the minister to give the advertising industry a pride of place in accessing intervention funds through the Central Bank of Nigeria, as well as enjoy tax relief like other players in the creative industry. The Minister of Information and Culture was at the meeting with the Director General of the Nigerian Television Authority, Malami Yakubu Ibn Mohammed, DG, NBC, Registrar and Chief Executive, APCON. In Lagos, Anthony Forson, NTA News. This is NTA Network News. We'll be back shortly. <laughs> The Borno State University was one of the projects commissioned by President Muhammadu Buhari in Maiduguri. Established in 2016 amid significant progress under Governor Kashim Shetima, the State University has since 2019 witnessed accelerated infrastructural development by the Zulum administration. Zulum completed the Senate building, road network and landscaping. Zulum freshly built two giant hostels with 150 rooms for 1,200 students and 34 duplexes and bungalows for professors, senior and intermediate staff. Zulum also began a teaching hospital towards medical programs. Professor Zulum aims to make the Borno State University one of the best tertiary institutions in Nigeria and Everybody. Representatives Right Honorable Ahmad Idris Wasi sends warm congratulations to the Speaker Femi Bajabia Miller as he celebrates his 59th birthday. Working with you as a deputy has been an exciting experience. In line with the mantra, nation building, a joint tax, you have ably brought unity among members. May Almighty Allah continue to grant you good health to serve the fatherland and humanity. Announcer Ahmad Idris Wasi, House Deputy Speaker. I they look for pension fund administrator. We soft, make sense, we care for me. Shy. No be the time when story go enter the matter. When it's time to deliver. Oh no, 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 no. The brand be sure them no go stress you. Uh, Call them, then they accessible. Yes, so. Customer care where they on point. On point. No go regret when you try of course. Uh,
Join over 700,000 satisfied members and enjoy the premium experience at our offices across the 36 states in Nigeria, including the FCT. Call 09-4615-700-704 to make the switch today. Premium Benchon. Active today, premium tomorrow. Majority Leader, House of Representatives, and Sardona Ronu, Right Honorable Alassan Adodogua and his family celebrate the charismatic, unique, amiable, and dynamic speaker, House of Representatives, and Sado Kinyawuri, Right Honorable Femi Bajabi Amila, as he clocks 59. Your wisdom, leadership qualities, love for humanity, and accommodating spirit is well attested to. May Almighty Allah continue to grant you good health and grace to positively impact on the lives of ordinary Nigerians. Announcer, Alassan Adodogwa, House Leader. African Children Talent Discovery Foundation presents an engineer Noah Dalaji Legacy Project 2021, a talent hunt and mentorship program by world-class international superstars and a novelty football match between superstar friends of Dalaji against Bauchi All-Stars FC. Come and watch superstars like Nigeria's Daniel Dobul Amokachi, JJ Okocha, Noanko Kanu, Tijani Babangida, Joseph Yobo, Celestine Babayaro, Victor Kpeba, Emmanuel Emenike, and Taribo West. Ghana's Stephen Apia, Senegal's Kalilu Fadiga, and El Haji Diouf, plus DRC's Lumana Lua Lua, light up the beautiful city of Bauchi. Date 27 June 2021. Venue Abubakar Tafawa Belewa Stadium, Bauchi. Time 5 p.m. Prompt. Gate is free. ACTDF, discovering Africa's talents. Go big and live stream world class football and more from Supersport, the biggest African Magic and Emmy award winning series, blockbusters and kids shows. Go big for less and get Showmax Mobile or Showmax Pro Mobile plus 2.5 gig MTN data included at a great price that suits you. That's 25 hours of sports, series, movies and kids shows with a one month Showmax subscription with 2.5 gig MTN data. Dial star 131 hash or visit showmax.com slash MTN now. You welcome back. Plans are on the way to domesticate all the ratified UNESCO cultural conventions by Nigeria. Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Information and Culture, Ifoma Anyawotuku. Anyawotaku said this at an implications workshop of the 1955 Convention for the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict and the Production of Periodic Report. Hamman Germany reports. The words of the 1954 Hague Convention, parties to an armed conflict are not allowed to direct hostility against cultural property and must avoid incidental damage to such property. It is in the light of this that the federal government organizes this workshop to ensure that Nigeria's cultural heritage are preserved for the future. And the emergent report will also constitute an essential source of information for cultural heritage professionals, for researchers and policy makers. Nigeria provides necessary administrative legal frameworks and conducive environment for achieving the aims of the convention but countries have continued to witness the cases of plunder theft illicit trafficking and destruction of cultural heritage despite calls locally and internationally for its stoppage experts say it is important that this heritage should receive international protection hamman jabani and tn President Muhammadu Buhari has approved the appointment of Mr. Atawo Obina as chairman of the Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency for a four-year term. The president also approved the reappointment of Mr. Abdul Qadir Saidu as executive secretary of the agency for another four years. In a statement by Special Advisor on Media and Publicity to the 
President Mr. Femi Adeshina says the appointment of Mr. Atau Obina is in accordance with Section 2, Subsection 1 to 3, and Section 3, Subsection A of the Petroleum Product Pricing Regulatory Agency Establishment Act 2003. The International Labour Organization's country director, Venice Apala, has tasked Nigeria to take advantage of her new elevation to the governing body of work to harmonize position of the tripartite constituents towards attracting technical assistance as the ILO prepares to complete its biennial program and budget. This was during a discussion on Nigeria's progress on the review of the process of obsolete labor laws and efforts to present new bills to the National Assembly. Emmanuel Anyemiro reports. It is the end of international labor organization by ANA system and member nations are already articulating a number of assistance from the ILO. So, interventions from the ILO are demand-driven. But such assistance is not without, in some cases, the fulfillment of certain requirements which the ILO director wants um, to know. Mandate of the ILO Labor Minister and... therefore gave an update on the recently reconstitution of the National Labor Advisory Council which is an attempt to review the labor laws and pass the bills to the parliament. At the end of the day, it's the ILO supporting the ministry. It's the ministry leading the implementation. It's the ministry leading the coordination, the facilitation, and the engagement on the ground. We need assistance in the procurement of consultants that will help us review. We need assistance in procurement of uh, the people we call legal draftsmen. Nigeria also made requests for waiver on intellectual property rights for local production of COVID-19 vaccines. Emmanuel Ayemiro, NTN. Now, the need for the broadcast industry in Nigeria to key into innovation for effective reportage in conflict situation and promote nation building came under careful scrutiny at the inaugural lecture by the first professor of broadcast journalism in northern Nigeria, Ladi Sandra Adamu of Ahmadou Bello University, Zaria. Tina Toro reports. Inaugural lecture is titled The Spider in the Web. Digitalization of Conflict Reporting in a Pluralistic Nigerian Society. Professor Ladi Adamu likens the essence of human existence and interaction as a spider web, with people playing their roles for development of society. The media industry, which she says is indispensable, can take advantage of digital information and communication systems to promote national cohesion. There is need for training. Many journalists cannot write conflict stories. They are not equipped. Some are ethnic. They write based on their sentiments. Other speakers say issues raised will help in conflict prevention, tasking practitioners to avoid heating up the polity. Part of the problem in uh, handling the security challenges we have has to do with information. Professor Ladi Sandra Adamu was a staff of Nigerian Television Authority JOS as announcer, presenter, reporter, and news editor in Zaria, Tina Turu, NTA News. Governor Mohamed Inua Yahya of Gombe State has carried out an assessment tour of some schools in the state, affirming that paying attention to the education sector will guarantee a better future for the younger generation of Nigerians. The tour is also to assess the execution of the state of emergency he declared on the education sector in 2019. Emmanuel Akila reports. Cheers from students of Government Science Secondary School, Jekadafari. Government Girls College, Doma, and Government Comprehensive Secondary School, Dad in Kowa, for the new hostels, classroom blocks, staff quarters, as well as teaching and learning materials, courtesy of the Inwa Yahaya administration, targeted at changing the negative perception and the performance of students in government-owned schools. I want to make sure that Gombe places among the first 10 states in terms of high quality education in Nigeria. That has been my clear objective and I think we shall achieve it. Amidst the provision of infrastructure in schools in Gombe State, the concern of the government is also about the performance of the students. And the students speak about that themselves. 
We, the students, are trying our possible best to see that the, v the labor of our teachers is not in vain because we are going to write them with our good performance and the performance are being good, better than the one of last time. And I also believe that perform our performance next time will, better, will be better than the one we are doing now. Elated by the successes, Inua Yahaya gave assurances of building what he calls legacy schools with modernization to further raise the bar in the performance of students in the state. In Gombe, Emmanuel Akila, NTN News. The decade-long insurgency in Borno State has left thousands of youths uneducated and jobless, making them susceptible to Boko Haram influence. Governor Babagana Umara Zulum's administration has made job creation one of the ten parked development agenda to stem the tide of restiveness among youths through vocational skills and other forms of empowerment. Mohamed Goni in this special report examines the measures put in place so far in the last two years in the area of vocational training and other forms of empowerment. Job creation and youth empowerment are some of the critical issues captured in the 10 fact development agenda of the present administration in Borno. The Ministry for Higher Education has been mandated to establish vocational training centers in addition to rehabilitation of the existing ones across the state, one of which was recently inaugurated by President Muhammad Buhari. The Vocational Institute will not only train youth who could not attend school and those who dropped out of schools in different trades and skill development to make them self-reliant and useful to the society, but the centers will also shield them from the dangerous ideology of the insurgents, largely targeting unemployed and idle youth. My concern with youth empowerment is also reflected in the policy decision with primary focus on youth skill acquisition apprentices, youth empowerment and entrepreneurship scheme. It is on the basis of this that the present administration made deliberate policy of empowering the citizens, especially the small-scale entrepreneurs and petty traders, to enable them to return to their means of livelihood. Rebuilding communities as part of post-insurgency recovery effort cannot be complete without roads and drainages construction, which is why Governor Zulum put in place deliberate policy to construct new roads, rehabilitate existing rural and urban roads and drainages in the state capital and across communities being rebuilt. Our houses used to be flooded when it rained, but with the new roads and drainages, the challenges have been overcome. Governor Zulum administration also commenced the first ever and the longest flyover in the northeast with a distance of 4.5 kilometers in Maiduguri, which when completed will not only decongest the metropolis but also adorn the city. To boost the transportation sector in the state, Professor Wagana Umara procured police or vehicle numbering about 70 for town services and long trip to ease movement of goods and services. In Maiduguri, Mahmoud Goni, NTA News. The federal government has given letters of engagement to 206 independent monitors to ensure that vulnerable citizens benefit directly from its social investment programs. Musa Tolet reports that the event was organized by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development in collaboration with the Ministry of Wealth Creation and Employment in Lagos. The 206 independent monitors are part of the 5,000 trained across the country by the Ministry of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development between February and April this year to take charge of supervision of various disbursements and implementation of the national social investment programs in their localities. It's going to be tasky, but I feel it's something that we just have to do to contribute our quota to the development of this nation. I know it won't be easy at first, but being consistent in it, I believe I'll be able to carry a lot along. Minister of Humanitarian Affairs, Disaster Management and Social Development, Sadia Umar Farouk, who was represented, reeled out conditions and guidelines on how the independent monitors will discharge their duties effectively to achieve results. You will also be paid a monthly stipend, just like the NPAR beneficiaries of 30,000 but you must meet up to 80% of your deliverables monthly to be eligible for this stipend. We are required to ensure that resources meant for these programs are utilized in your communities. Governor Babajide Sonwolu, who was represented, lauded the federal government's initiative aimed at taking more Nigerians out of poverty. Since the commencement of this program in Lagos State, over 6,800 of our people have continued to benefit from regular cash transfer in four by monthly cycle under the conditional cash transfer program. And their national assignments will last for 12 months. In Lagos, Musa Tolian, NTA News. For more reports from Lagos, let's join Adiola. She's our guide. Hello, Adiola.
Hello, Jumai. Good to see you. While the entire universe was in lockdown due to the COVID-19 pandemic, seafarers were rendering selfless service to ensure a constant flow of logistics supply. June 25 every year is a day set aside to celebrate these unsung heroes and Nigeria is domesticating instruments to enhance a better future for them. Michael Olaleye reports. There are more than 1.6 million seafarers globally contributing to the conveyance of 11 billion tons of goods worldwide. As Kano Riso is a terminal operator, not directly in contact with seafarers, but recounting the experience of the COVID-19 lockdown and global travel restrictions, he ascertained that seafarers were the last man standing. They've been supporting the economy, they've been ensuring that the logistics chain was not broken. As of March 2021, an estimated 200,000 seafarers are currently stranded of ships beyond the end of their original contract and could not be repatriated due to travel restrictions associated with the COVID-19 pandemic. The ship could be sometimes like a prison because don't forget, once they are out, they are on their own. This gathering is not just extolling the virtues and commitments of seafarers, but exploring means of improving their living conditions while on board. We will ensure that we, the policies we make at least attract the minimum best living condition for them. That is, all those who operate vessels in our territory, in our water, must ensure they meet those, that, those conditions that the government will put in place through NIMASA as a policy. The federal government, through the National Seafarers Development Program, has trained 2,500 personnel, and this will in turn translate to prompt change of crew, which is one of the objectives of the 2021 Fair Feature for Seafarers campaign. We'll make sure that we provide a standard welfare where each and every one of you can go and unwind when you are out there from the sea. The Deep Blue project of the federal government is not just a maritime security solution to safeguard the country's exclusive economic zone, but securing lives on board, including that of seafarers. In Lagos, Michael Olale, NT News. Emzo Pharmaceutical Industries Group, one of Nigeria's leading pharmaceutical companies, has attained another feat with the establishment of an ultra-modern World Health Organization compliant factory. Hingino John Adams reports that Permanent Secretary in the Federal Ministry of Health, Abdulaziz Mashi Abdullahi, inspected the facility in Shagamu, Ogun State. This ultra-modern factory is sitting on 60 hectares of land in Shagamu, Ogun State. Even in the midst of a global pandemic, Emzo Pharmaceutical Industries Group has thrived against all odds to build and equip an ultra-modern WHO-compliant factory, giving Nigerians hope for improved health security. The massive project has various sections which include production plant, instrument, dissolution, weighing and chemical storage rooms, among others. Permanent Secretary, Federal Ministry of Health, al Haj Abdulaziz Mashi Abdullahi, is impressed with the project. I don't think there is anywhere uh, with this kind of investment that uh, a responsible government will not do to support and encourage this particular investor. Managing director of the company, Dr. Stella Okoli, was full of gratitude to the federal government and all those who contributed in making the project come to fruition. A good God will reward you and, uh, you know, keep you. There are, I think, currently four distinct plants. You know, they have separate water, separate air handling units, etc., separate warehousing and the like to enable us to meet the international standard. The ultra-modern factory is EMSA's fourth factory and its journey of drug production began 37 years ago with EMSA paracetamol. Today, EMSA produces a wide range of drugs, including hospital equipment. In Lagos, Hingino John Adams, NTA News. And that's it from Lagos. We'll go on another break. The news will continue thereafter. Please stay with us. 
Will this penalty be the decider? It's going through the player's mind here. You could cut the tension with a knife. Is there one more twist in this long, rocky road to the final? And here's the kick. And he scores! They've taken the win. They're through. Don't worry, my boy. There's always the next time. It's in to Icarlo from the wing. Join the winning team and stream every match with Glow Special Data Plans. For everything Glow, dial star triple seven hash. Great supporters of football. Glow. The much anticipated UEFA Euro 2021 is finally here. Can Portugal defend the title they won four years ago as they face world champions France, Europe giants Germany, Spain, Italy and England? Catch all the action via live transmission, in-depth studio analysis, fixtures, results, updates and lots more on NTA, Africa's largest TV network. For sponsorship and advert placement, contact Bola on 080-37044-286 or Idris on 080-34633-644. This broadcast is proudly brought to you by NTA in partnership with Media Business Solutions, MBS Sports. happen at home too. That's why Dettol and me together will make my baby's home safe and to protect from up to 100 illness causing germs. That's why moms want to be Dettol. Dettol sure. We are Dettol, Dettol sure. Finally, Euro 2020 is here. Enjoy all the matches live on Star Times for only 1,700 Naira monthly or 160 Naira per day. Recharge now to enjoy all the matches. Watch Cristiano Ronaldo of Portugal, Mbappe of France, Lukaku of Belgium and other top European football stars. No matter where you are, Star Times is here for you. You can enjoy all these matches on your mobile phone. Just download Star Times on app on your phone to watch all the matches for 1,000 Naira monthly or 400 Naira weekly. Recharge today with 1,700 Naira monthly or 160 Naira daily. That's right, you heard me. On Star Times, you can watch all the matches with monthly subscription of 1,700 Naira or daily subscription of 160 Naira. Terms and conditions apply. Star Times. Enjoy digital life. Thanks for rejoining us. The more functional health institutions, the closer healthcare service delivery to Nigerians. Sponsors and key players at a public hearing made this position known when five bills and a motion came up for hearing before the Senate Committee on Health, Secondary and Tertiary. Join Yakuk Hasmo. The five Bs are the Orthopedic Hospital Management Board Amendment B to accommodate Orthopedic Hospital in Dekina, Kogi State, Psychiatric Hospital Management Amendment B to accommodate a psychiatric hospital in Kwara State, the Nursing and Midwifery Amendment B, and that for the University Teaching Hospital Reconstitution of Board B for the Federal Teaching Hospital, Lafia and Yola. It's intended to complete all the required legislative enactments to bring the Federal University Life Air Teaching Hospital into full operation. Traditional bone setters lack of knowledge of anatomy, physiology, or radiography has brought about limb and life threatening complications. The Federal Ministry of Health supports the establishment of neuropsychiatric hospital in Kwara State. And then the motion by Senator Luremi Tinubu on the need for NAVDAC to regulate the formulation and distribution of cosmetics in Nigeria. Formulation of beauty products ranging from lotion, oil, scrubs, soaps, 
and label them handmade, um, natural or organic. The two-day public hearing will also consider four other establishment bills. They are the one for a Federal University of Medical and Health Sciences in Ikiti State, the Federal Medical Center or TUEDA, the Federal University Teaching Hospital Lafia and the National Emergency Services Agency Bill. In Abuja, John Yaku, NTA News. Seven persons have been reported dead as a result of cholera outbreak in the Federal Capital Territory. Acting Secretary Health and Human Services Secretariat Dr. Mohamed Kau made this known while briefing the media in Abuja. Shoaibu Oneze Yakubu was there and brought back this report. Cholera is an infectious disease caused by bacteria. The outbreak of the disease is more common during rainy season when running water is mostly contaminated. Acting Secretary Health and Human Services Secretariat Dr. Mohamed Kau disclosed that so far, 91 suspected cases of cholera have been enlisted in three area councils with seven deaths. A total of 91 suspected cases have so far been enlisted, but there is no death from Guagulada and Bari area councils. Out of this, three cases have tested positive for cholera using the rapid diagnosis test. The acting secretary also revealed that the Department of Public Health has intensified surveillance in communities while health facilities have been provided to safeguard lives of the people. We are prepositioning some rapid diagnostic test kits, drugs and consumables in some of our health facilities. Residents are, however, advised to report any suspected case to the nearest health center and to ensure that water used for domestic purposes is clean while food should be properly cooked before consumption. Shuaibu Onoseyakubu, NTA News. Still talking health, a data research tagged data for COVID-19 Africa challenge to understand the social, economic and political factors that influence behavioral responses to the containment of the disease has been launched in Abuja for implementation. Elizabeth Umori reports that the project is expected to last for six months. With the emergence of public health concerns, notably COVID-19, the AFD and other partners have funded the Data for COVID-19 Challenge Project to shape population behavior and response to safety protocols. The dialectics of data versus this the sociological context in which we interpret data must always be a dialectic that must be thought about at all times. We want to actually pick up the data from different parts of the country, different strata of society, to really understand people's perceptions, what is driving those perceptions. Perceptions at different levels of society, so we can address them. The data challenge will be driven by the College of Medicine, University of Lagos, and the Niger Center for Disease Control, which has reported more than 170,000 cases in Nigeria as of June 2021. This project will give us information and enable, enable us to, be able to have a more proactive plan, no, uh, to have a more proactive time that may actually help us to manage whatever is coming. The initiative received 83 proposals and Nigeria emerged one of the award recipients to undertake the project, which is designed to analyze compliance with non-pharmaceutical measures in Nigeria. In Abuja, Elizabeth Omori, NT News. The world's largest flag has been unveiled in Nigeria. The unique size is with a view to further strengthen Nigeria's democracy and as a symbol of national unity. Correspondent Chola Wahid reports that the chief of the defense staff, General Lucky Irabo, joined Nigeria's national flag designer, Pa Taiwo Akimumi, at the symbolic event in Ibadan. The flag, which covers an area of 3,276 square meters, has a length of 75.3 meters, is expected to strengthen the unity of Nigeria and further serves as a symbol of diversity in a unified nation. The Chief of Defense Staff, General Loki Irabo, emphasized the need for Nigerians to work together to ensure love and unity. Across the country, you hear calls for secession, calls and agitation for separation. I do think that this event today should help us to know that the United will stand 
and there's actually strength in unity. While unveiling the flag, the Octogenerate Pa Akinkumi urged everyone to do the needful to ensure continued peaceful coexistence for the survival of the country. I wish all and sundry good health. Good health. Tawo Akinkumi designed Nigeria's flag before he turned 23. His dream came true. Tawo Akinkumi, now 85, another dream has come true. The process to certify the achievement of the largest flag in the world has begun and is expected to be hoisted in the country later this year. In Ibarashola Wahid, NTA News. We'll take another break. We'll be right back. Issues of drugs and arms with direct consequences on national security. That is our focus on NTA Tuesday Live next week with those who should know. Tuesday Live, every Tuesday at 10.30 p.m. It promises to be incisive and educative. Don't miss it. front row seats to feel every motion to be part of the conversation and to live every banter looking for ronaldo hazard sterling for massive skills and out of this world moments looking for crystal clear picture quality expert analysis and the full experience of the euro 2020 come and get it watch the ua for euro 2020 live on supersport from 11 june to 11 july on go tv love it this broadcast is proudly brought to you by bet king playground for kings Welcome back, and Bade Adele is here with sports update, and of course, the Euro round of 16. Obviously, it starts on Saturday. Thank you, Jumai. Welcome to sports update. The Nigerian Olympians Association has decried the poor living condition of many former athletes, just as they called for government and public spirited Nigerians to support the ex internationals. The plea was made at the Maiden National Olympians Award Night held in Abuja Thursday. We should write a letter to all the governors naming all the states these great men and women have come out from. It is high time for state governors to do something for them. And to all the lawmakers, sports can be put into policy. Do not see sport as a recreation. To hockey now, Team Kaduna on Friday emerged the champions of the Mabe Soul Under-21 National Hockey Tournament in Port Harcourt after outscoring Team Lagos 1-0, while Team Rivers beat Kaduna 2-1 in the women's final. This will be the first time in 10 years the tournament is holding as six teams participated. They tried as much as possible to play tight, which is good for Nigerian hockey and coaching. Some of these players, this is their first international, the first national tournament they are playing, and they did the, 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 the job. So we need to encourage the youths. We need to bring them out uh, from the streets, and we'll continue to do it. And to football now, following the recent judgment of the Court of Arbitration for Sports, which reduced the live ban from football placed on Samson Siasia, the former Super Eagles player and coach has welcomed the ruling whilst maintaining his innocence. I'm very glad and appreciate, appreciate what you've done for me, but I know to have half years again without doing anything, it's not going to be easy. You know, when I was down, right in the valley, nobody, a lot of friends disappeared. Mostly friends that I played with. And finally, the round of 16 matches of Euro 2020 began on Saturday, with Wales taking on Denmark in the first game, while the second game, which will be live on NTA, will be between Italy and Austria. Studio opens at 7.30 in the evening. 
sports is back to Jumai. I know you cannot wait to see the round of 16 matches. Of course, I'm excited. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Okay. A service of songs ceremony has been held for Emmanuel Ikweme Ugoji of St. Bartholomew Anglican Church, Kubwa, Abuja. The service was an opportunity for those who knew him to recount how he positively impacted on people around him. It was also a time of sober reflection as the clergy reminded the congregation that debt is inevitable. Emmanuel Ugoji was a renowned journalist who died at the age of 58. He survived by his wife and three children. He will be buried on the 3rd of July at Ehome Umwa Para in Umwahia local government area of Abia State. And that's Network News. Thanks so much for being part of the news. I am Jomwa Yusuf. Do have a wonderful weekend. From the largest television network in Africa, the NTA, we bring to you Weekend File, where we seek the views of experts, government functionaries, movers of the economy, and the ordinary Nigerian on developmental challenges confronting the nation in an era of diversification, the process that is meant to reinvigorate all aspects of our national life in education, science, technology, and innovation, agriculture, health, and other aspects of societal development. The Weekend File crew has the onerous task of articulating all the issues, ensuring that all perspectives are brought to the table. On the show, all things matter, and opinions of every class count. Weekend File shows every Saturday at 9 p.m. on the NT8 network service. It is your weekend companion and a destination for news, views, and analysis. It is unmissable. NTA, you can't be doing This is the network service of the NTA.